Hey everyone, I'm Trevor and you're watching SoCal Disney Dad. Today we are comparing Sesame Place San Diego to Legoland California to help you determine which park is right for you. Sesame Place is San Diego's newest theme park located in Chula Vista. Technically, yes, it used to be SeaWorld Aquatica and the majority of that park still exists, but they've added dry rides and completely rethemed the whole park, giving it a more complete feel. The Legoland California Resort is located in Carlsbad and is made up of three separate entities, Legoland, the Sea Life Aquarium, and the Legoland Water Park. So let's dive right in. We're gonna break this down into six sections. Price, rides, water park, food, merchandise, and shows and activities. We'll start with price. Sesame Place is the cheaper of the two parks. Actual price to you is going to depend on the day and year of your purchase, but if you wanted to visit during spring break of 2022, you're looking at a cost of $64.99 per person. And because Sesame Place is owned by SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment, they also offer a two-park deal with SeaWorld San Diego for $119.99. That's a savings of about $15. But what if you wanna go more than once? Sesame Place offers a season pass, Notice it's a season pass, not an annual pass. Since it's a water park, it is closed through the winter months. It's also worth noting that according to Sesame Place's calendar, it's only open weekends during off-peak times of the year. A Sesame Place Silver Pass costs $132. Once again, as of the time of this filming, prices are subject to increase. This pass provides free general parking, two free guest passes, and up to 20% off on in-park purchases. A gold pass costs $168, and the only difference is you get up close parking, four free guest passes, and 30% on in-park purchases. A platinum pass costs $282 and gives you access to all 11 of SeaWorld's parks in the US. There's a lot more to talk about with the platinum pass, but that needs to be a video all on its own. Legoland is the more expensive of the two. One day tickets start at $89.99 for only Legoland and go up to $120.99 for a resort hopper that grants access to Legoland Park, the Sea Life Aquarium, and the Legoland Water Park. If you don't wanna to go to Sea Life, they do have a park and water park option, but it's only a dollar less, seriously. Legoland has too many annual passes to deep dive into them, but their Silver Pass starts at $179.99 and goes up to the Elite Pass for $299.99. Blockout dates do apply for Legoland passes, with the Elite Pass being the only pass with no blockout dates, and it includes access to Brick or Treat, an extra paid experience Saturdays in October. When it comes down to sheer cost, Sesame Place San Diego is the winner here. But what about the value for your buck? Let's move on to rides. Sesame Place San Diego used to be SeaWorld Aquatica, a water park that had no dry rides as they're now calling them. This was an addition when SeaWorld overhauled the theme park between the 2021 and 2022 season. There are seven dry rides with the largest ride being a coaster called Super Grover's Boxcar Derby. This roller coaster has a 42 inch height requirement and is fairly short. Four of the seven dry rides have no height requirement, with Abby's Ferry Flight requiring 36 inches and Cookie Climb requiring 38 inches. This is because both of these rides require your child to sit by themselves strapped into their own seat. All seven of these rides are fairly small and not designed for adults. While you can fit into them and still have fun, spaces are often tight. Legoland California is home to 26 dry rides, which is about 20 too many for us to cover in detail. Many of these rides too are designed for very small children, and some even have an upper age limit, meaning older children can't ride. But there are several family-friendly thrilling rides, such as the Dragon Coaster, which is my four-year-old's personal favorite, or the Lego Technic Coaster, which is a wild mouse type ride with a minimum height and age requirement. When it comes to dry rides, Legoland California easily takes the prize in this matchup. You can also start to see why Legoland is the more expensive of the two parks. Let's move on to Water Park. This is the third time I've said it, but it's important to remember Sesame Place San Diego used to be Aquatica, which was primarily an adult water park. They have since removed the three speed slides that were by far the most adult of the water slides at Sesame Place, but everything else is still the same just with a new paint job and name. 
I visited Sesame Place San Diego for the media preview on Friday before opening weekend, and it was my first time to the park in any iteration. There have been a total of four, including Sesame Place. My family and I had an absolute blast. The only water slide my four-year-old couldn't ride was Cookie Monster Mixer, which has a 48-inch height requirement. Personally, after riding that, I don't think even I will be going on it again. Here we go. Oh, boy. The water slides here are fast and thrilling, but if that's too much for you or your little ones, it does feature a wave pool, a children's play zone, and a lazy river that can easily take up several hours of your day. Legoland Water Park, on the other hand, it definitely caters to the smaller members of the family. It does have a few water slides, but they aren't fast. And Orange Rush, which is most similar to Oscar's Rotten Rafts at Sesame Place, is slower with fewer sharp turns and doesn't make you feel like you're going to die at all. You think I'm joking, but here's my youngest after riding Oscar's Rotten Rafts. And Benjamin, what'd you think, buddy? Look right here. What'd you think? Yeah. <laughs> if you still think I'm lying, here's David from Big Red Journeys riding it. Come on, Sesame Place! <laughs> Why you gotta do Big Red Journeys? <laughs> Legoland Water Park does have a wave pool, but it's part of the Kaima Water Park, which is only open in the summer, or at least that's the case for the 2022 season. It's also worth mentioning that you can't get into the Legoland Water Park without first paying for admission to Legoland itself. There is no separate entry, and access is only through the Fun Town area of Legoland, whereas Sesame Place has one price up front, and you get access to both wet and dry rides. Sesame Place San Diego wins this matchup, but that's no surprise. It is first and foremost a water park. Next up is food. Sesame Place has three food locations right in the center of the park. I'm not gonna pull any punches. These food locations have limited options and high prices. Sesame Place is so isolated from everything else, they know you don't really have a choice but to pay for their food at whatever they wanna charge. Sesame Place is owned by SeaWorld, and no offense to SeaWorld, we really do love them and appreciate everything that they do, but their food is subpar at best, and it's no different here at Sesame Place San Diego. Legoland California, on the other hand, has a wide variety of food options, both in the main park and in the water park. Our favorite is Knight's Barbecue, which offers some of the best theme park food we've had anywhere in Southern California. The other options throughout the park are great too. They tend to be higher priced than Sesame Place, but the portion size and the food quality itself justifies that price, whereas Sesame Place just feels like highway robbery. Legoland California wins the foodie scene hands down. If you're keeping score, it's two points to Sesame Place and two points to Legoland, but we're not done. What about merchandise? Full disclosure, I am not a merch guy. Sesame Place had a lot of really nice looking things that I would never buy, but you might especially if you're a huge Sesame Street fan. I mean, we're talking Cookie Monster shirts and a onesie, some nice towels, and a special Oscar the Grouch Loungefly backpack that I overheard many guests going gaga over. Legoland California has primarily, well, Legos. So if that's your jam, Legoland is your place. There's t-shirts and other merch too, but there really are just tons and tons of Legos. We're talking Star Wars Legos, Harry Potter Legos, Mario Legos, you name it. I can't honestly rate these, so I'm gonna call it a tie, which means that the whole thing comes down to our last category, which is shows and activities. Sesame Place only had two shows at its launch in March of 2022. There's Welcome to Our Street, which is a theater they built in place of the speed slides that used to be at Aquatica. It's in the far back end of the park, and the show was enjoyable enough, but I didn't stick around for too long during our media preview, as there was too much I had to get done in the time that they allowed us. The Sesame Street Party Parade was fun and enjoyable, if a little bit too long. The major problem being space. There's just not a lot of it, and I see it being an issue during the busiest times of the year, like spring break and summer. 
Legoland California doesn't have any parades, and its stage shows leave much to be desired. But where Legoland really shines is in its playgrounds and interactive activities from game rooms to build stations located throughout the park. There's a factory tour, a scavenger hunt for Lego keys, and a whole area dedicated to Lego displays of entire cities. It's pretty impressive. There are just so many of these areas, including a huge 4D theater that does have decent videos that makes Legoland the easy winner here. So which park wins? If you're keeping tally, Legoland California is the winner of our matchup. It has absolutely everything in one package and could easily be a two or three day experience for your family. Sesame Place, on the other hand, can be done in one day without issue. But what if all you have time for is one day? Could you get everything done at Legoland in one day? Not if you want to enjoy the water park. And what if the water park is the main draw for you and you'd like some thrill along with it? You may find that even though Legoland wins in a matchup of features, Sesame Place is still the better option for your family. So which is the right park for you? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have any questions about either location, I'm happy to answer them and help make your next visit to San Diego the perfect vacation. For more matchups, check out this video where I pit the San Diego Zoo versus the San Diego Zoo Safari Park to help you determine which park is right for you. We'll see you again next time.